How is it going, everybody? Welcome back, everyone. Thank you for joining us for the first ever live show of The Michael Balco Show. I'm your host, Michael Balco, and I am joined by a very, very good friend of mine over here to my right. He, he is a writer and contributor for whodatdish.com. He also has his own show called The Black and Gold Hour. My boy, Merv Walls, how are we doing today, fam? Good, man. Good, man. Happy to be here. Thank you for having me on, man. I really appreciate it, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I've joined his show so many times, so I had to return the favor real quick. You already know. But the reason I want to have my boy Merv here today is because we have a very special guest. He recently signed with the New Orleans Saints as an undrafted free agent from Iowa State. Please join me in welcoming Dylan Sainer to the show. How are we doing, Dylan? Doing good, man. Uh, excited to be here. Excited to, you know, start start getting out in, into the Houdat Nation a little bit and and, you know, kind of feel it out. Yeah, man, we're super excited to have you too, man. I, I was watching you in college, and I loved your play style and things like that. I know a lot of Saints fans do too. We've heard nothing but great things about you, so we're super happy to have you on the show today. But first and foremost, we got to rep that area code. Tell us a little bit about your hometown and kind of what makes it so unique. Man, there there ain't a lot to tell, to be honest with you. Um, <laughs> it's a small hometown. You know, we I think population is like 4,000, 4,500 maybe. Um so not not real big one stoplight kind of stuff, and you know it's it's close to Fayetteville where where the University of Arkansas is, so that's probably like the nearest landmark. But um, you know, unique wise, there's there is a Civil War battlefield there. You know, people some people think it's cool to they'll travel to go see it, even though you know I grew up next to it, so it's not really that cool to me. But um, other than that, that's really all we got. Um, you know, just small town. It's cool. You know everybody. Um, it's cool for me to go back because like. Uh, you know, now I get out places and, you know, some people kind of look at me a little different or maybe treat me a little different where like I go back to the hometown and it's like, oh, you know, Dylan's back, you know, it's just him. So it's kind of cool to to have that that feel still there. Yeah, man. And, and I definitely relate to like the small town growing up in um, Virginia. Hampton is kind of a small town. Everybody knows everybody. But thinking of small towns and going back to your high school days. You went to Prairie Grove High School, a three-star recruit, and you had, you know, offers from Purdue and Missouri. But I want to ask you why you chose Iowa State. Um, what led you to bring your talents to that university? Yeah, man, uh, it, it really ended up not being that hard for me. I, I had scheduled a few official visits. Uh, took my first one to Iowa State, committed right after it. Um, the real reasoning is, you know, Coach Campbell, you know, Matt Campbell, he's starting to rise nationally a little bit, you know, kind of building the name for himself. But um, just an incredible human being, you know, you know, from the very most basic level, just a good guy. Uh, on top of that, a great football coach and a winner. You know, he he's going to win wherever he's at. And I kind of knew that and I trusted him and his staff. Um, you know, they, they all stick together, which you don't really see in college football today. And, you know, that's a really neat thing. Like. Um, you know, we've got coordinators that could go get head jobs, but they just know, you know, they want to be tight knit and, and they're all best friends. And so, but you, you know, he's, he did that Toledo and I was like, and this guy's going to win. And, you know, they worked out for me. Yeah. So during your career there, uh, we saw you win several awards, um, some good academic awards as well. So you got it done in the classroom as well as on the field, which is always a good thing. Um, you saw a lot of success on the field as well. Kind of at what point did you realize you could take your talents, you know, to the next level, to the NFL level? Yeah, I mean, obviously always been been a dream since a kid, right? You know, every, everyone has the dream. Um, I think like after my redshirt freshman year going into the sophomore season, like, my role was developing. It was getting, you know, I was becoming more involved um, offensively. I was always a big special teams guy, but um, as I started to see my role evolve on offense a little bit and, you know, having success in that role was like, man, you know, I think like I could, I could probably do this for a long time. Okay. Okay. And I wanted to jump to the NFL draft. I wanted to jump to your NFL draft process. And what was that like? And, and, were you upset when you weren't drafted? Kind of, how did you feel? Did you feel motivated? What was the process like for you? Yeah, uh, that was a crazy day. Um, craziest day in my life, that that day three of the draft. Um, you know, it was – so we felt like we should have been drafted by we, you know, my agency and I. Um, you know, all the feedback we had, the interviews that we had that were good, um, and kind of just what we were hearing was like, hey, you know, everyone's like, Man, we got five, six round grade on him. Um, that was kind of pretty standard. We heard across the board from a lot of the teams that that we had in our top ten or so. Um, so we we felt good about it going into it. 
Uh, we even had some calls during the draft that was like, hey, this next pick is, you know, it's you. Like it was calls like that. And then, the, you know, the pick comes up and it just doesn't pan out that way. Um, so, you know, it was it was disappointing, I guess. But at the same time, you know, there's there's pros and cons either way. Um, obviously, I ended up in a great place and, uh, you know, with a pretty, pretty sweet undrafted free agent deal. Um, you know, you can you can if it pay, if your career pans out the way you, you would hope it to, you can renegotiate after your second year. Um, it's something that gives you a little bit more freedom in that. Um, so like I said, it was, it was wild. Um, definitely chip on your shoulder for sure. Uh, you know, it, whether there should be or not, it's, you can argue that because, you know, the draft, it is what it is. It's, it's kind of all fluff. And then, you know, you gotta, you gotta put the pads on and roll the ball out and, and play ball. So, um, that's kind of what I'm waiting for at this point. But, and I know you guys will probably ask about the post draft process here pretty soon. So. Yeah. Yeah. She <laughs> just took me right into it. So you weren't, un you weren't undrafted for very long. Um, so tell us about like how many, how much conversation did you kind of have with the new Orleans saints during throughout your entire like off season, you know, kind of like the draft process, what other team showed interest in you? And then like right after, you know, you became an undrafted free agent, what other team showed interest in you and why did you ultimately choose to take your talents to the new Orleans saints? Yeah. So I had had a good interview zoom interview with coach Roshar and the saints. Um, early on, like, you know, February, March in that area, whenever that was. Um, and so that was, I had that interview with them a couple days later, uh, the news breaks, oh, Jared Cook and Josh Hill are out. And then I was like, okay, so like interview went well, you know, this is going on right now in free agency. So it was like, you know, probably like a real opportunity at some point, um, is what it looked like for me. So I, I, I had them in, in mind early on. Um, and then he also, the coach Roshar also worked me out at pro day. So then that was another just kind of, you know, time I got to meet him in person. That was good. Um, and then right after the draft and really started during the draft, there was, I mean, we're talking halfway through the seventh round, there's teams that still got picks left that are calling me, you know, offering free agent money. And my agent, like he's not hearing it. He's like, man, you, if he's that big of a need, you got a draft pick. Like, what do you mean? Um, so it kind of went like that for a little while. Um, but then when the draft ended, man, it was it was like a movie. Honestly, there was <laughs> calls flowing in. I'm like having to hang up on head coaches because I got to take another call that I don't even know who it is. And, you know, I had to, I don't even know. I, I lost count, but I'd say, you know, somewhere between 15, 20 teams trying to contact me and and see if we could work out a deal. Um, Damn. <laughs> yeah, I had, I had like, uh, you know, came down. There was probably five teams that were offering similar deals uh, towards the end of the whole thing. And you're just trying to get back and forth like, hey, you know, the Saints offered this and then we're calling the Bills like, hey, you know, this is the Saints offer. Like, what do you got for us? And calling, it, you know, Atlanta, Baltimore, like all these teams like trying to communicate, hey, this is what he's got right now. Like, do you got anything better? So that's kind of how it goes. Um, and then as the time goes, you you know, th the way it works, like if, if you're not going to take it, they're going to filter the money down to the next guy. So. Um, they kind of want quick decisions and you know, you're talking life changing decisions, but you got like four minutes and 30 seconds to make it. So, you know, I'm looking at the money. I'm trying to write down what I can, you know, catch and looking at the roster, like analyzing rosters while you're analyzing the money piece of it at the same time. And, uh, you know, my agent helped me with that, obviously, but ended up, uh, New Orleans was good offer, um, money wise, which obviously everyone, you know, you want to look at that piece of it. You make sure you're taking care of families, taken care of, um, you know, 120,000 guaranteed is, is probably out there. You know, people have seen that, uh, which, you know, in the grand scheme of the league, isn't a ton of money, but for an undrafted free agent, that's pretty solid, pretty solid contract for sure. Um, so that we had a couple offers that were really similar to that. Um, but we just felt like the roster situation um, in my relationship already with coach Roshar kind of knowing him uh, he knows our strength coach at Iowa state. So, couple good relationships and you know i i've i thought he was a good guy but then i'm hearing from a strength coach that i worked with that i trust that he's a really good guy so um kind of all that lined up correctly and we ended up taking the deal uh worked out for me i've been a saints fan my entire life so you know not many Ooh. kids not many kids can say that they you know grew up and got to got to go play for their favorite ball club but we all uh, knew so, it was the Saints all along, man. man it, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I told my family, I was like, hey, don't let that don't let that weigh in on this decision right now. Like, 
I was like, mom, don't let me take a bad deal just because I like the Saints. But it ended up everything worked out. So, Yeah, man. And I'm glad you're here because I've watched the highlights. I've seen the hands. I've seen the blocking ability that you possess. And the Saints really have a need at tight end with the release of Jared Cook and Josh Hill. So I want to ask you, what unique talents do you bring to the Saints that will help you make the squad in 2021? Yeah, so I think, I mean, a, a good base level talent to have for a tight end is being able to block on the ball. I can block off the ball, on the ball, motion. Um, you can see that my college tape, they kind of move me everywhere. Um, I blocked on the perimeter. So I think for, you know, an all right, if you're looking for an all around tight end, a true why, that's a really good foundation to have, um, you know, basic blocking skills. I also think, you know, when I get there and I'm getting to run around and do a little, you know, a little bit of stuff, people didn't get to come to practice this year. Uh, scouts, coaches, you know, that usually come in and filter through practice. Um, and I do a lot in practice that I didn't get to do on Saturdays because my role in our offense just it, it, it is what it is. Um, you know, we, we had two other tight ends that were they're also great at what they do. Also NFL level, you know, talent. So I think that base, you know, blocking sure there's things I can improve on. There's always going to be things that I can improve on. But being sufficient a sufficient blocker is definitely going to help me but as i'm leading into i think there's a lot in the past game that a lot of people don't really realize at this time just be like i said my role was so limited on our offense at iowa state um but i did a lot of stuff in practice like i said people just didn't get to see so i think that's one thing you know that that might surprise some people down the road yeah, and the thing that's so nice about the New Orleans Saints is we're an equal opportunity team. So we've seen guys who, you know, don't have a huge role in college and stuff like that and, and end up being a star, you know, for the Saints. So, you know, there's no there's no reason that you can't be the exact same thing. And I'm I'm very excited to see you get out there and take the feel for us. But so what is you got to take us into like this transition a little bit, kind of what have you done? Maybe dietary workouts, you know, in that kind of realm. Um, like what kind of transitions have you had to make in that aspect to to gear up for your NFL career? Yeah, uh, I mean, the process was the training process, like for pro day, the combine, whatever. We didn't really know what we were having um, when we were training, which kind of sucked. But you're like training for the combine, but you don't even know if there's a combine. Um, that was a little weird. That was kind of a transition for me because the workouts are not they just weren't what I was used to. Um, you know, I'm used to training to be a better football player, but it turns out that training to test at the combine doesn't exactly match up with training to be a better football player. So that was a little bit of a transition. You know, workouts were structured a little differently, did things a little differently. Um, diet's a huge thing that, you know, I'll, some people in college just, it just doesn't happen. One year you're, you're too broke. Maybe your program doesn't provide you with, you know, as good as a food as they could. Um, so that's a huge piece of it for sure. Uh, getting somebody, you know, my, the easiest way I do it is I get somebody to make pre-made meals for me and I'll pick them up every two or three days. And all you do is pop it in the microwave and it's all it's rationed. It's healthy. It's good. And, you know, you do that research beforehand before you buy it from them. But, um, you know, that's the easiest for me. I do like to cook a little bit, but it's been so crazy uh, busy all the time this off season. So just buy the pre-made meals, man. And you know, that's that's been a big piece of it for me, something that I didn't really focus on in college as much. Um, resources are what they are. Um, they provided meals, you know, but you just eat what they provide. Um, but being, being able to, like, go out and actually, you know, change your diet on your own um, definitely has helped me a lot in training. And I've, I've, I've definitely seen improvements in a lot of areas from just that. Right, right. And let's go back. I know you said this, the Saints were your favorite team growing up, but I want to ask you, who were your favorite NFL tight ends? Whose game did you like and whose like style of play did you want to incorporate in your own game? Yeah, I mean, obviously I like Josh Hill a lot. Good player, great player. Um, you know, love what he does on the field. I like that's that's as far as Saints goes. You, you know, like I got a couple Jimmy Graham jerseys hanging up. I like him too. Uh, a little different player than what I am. Um, you know, I'm not mad at him either. It, it, man, guy wanted to get paid. He went and got paid. So I ain't mad. Got that uh, bag, bro. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> but man, uh, current guys right now, I like. Uh, so I think I'm a little a unique player. So there's not really like an exact like match like, oh, like I, I'm just like this guy. So let me just go watch this guy. So I kind of like pick and 
pull stuff from a few different players. Um, you know, blocking wise, Lee Smith is a great guy. Uh, like watching him a lot with Buffalo, just signed with Atlanta. Um, Nick Boyle in Baltimore, you know, both those guys play like hard nosed blocking football, you know, kind of kind of stuff I like. Uh, like watching those a lot. Um, you know, and then there's a, a plethora of great route running tight ends in the league. So, I mean, turn it on Darren Waller, Travis Kelsey. Mm-hmm. Like, I like watching Gronk a lot because, you know, big frame. Um, you know, honestly, doesn't run as good of routes as like a Travis Kelsey, but he uses his body incredible. And so um, I like watching him, you know, as a big guy, like, man, how can I learn to use my body like he does? Because he's so good at using his body, um, you know, and, and creating, you know, he doesn't even have to create separation because he's ginormous. Um, so just kind of pick and pull from a lot of different places. I think it's crazy that you just say Gronkowski because I literally was watching film and I was like, damn, he he uses his play style a lot the same way that Gronk does. So I find that insane that you mentioned Rob Gronkowski. It just means I'm actually kind I mean, of decent at watching film. Well, I mean, man, I I don't I'm not saying my career is gonna pan out like Rob Gronkowski, but Let's if hope. it does, we're not gonna be mad because man, you talk about the greatest ever right there. So hey, hey, as long as as long as we can equal out to the same amount of rings that Gronk has, we'll be good. <laughs> yeah, All we right, so <laughs> facts. So who is the best player you've ever played with and against? You can take it back to little gritters, you know, college, high school, it doesn't matter, my man. Just shout out a few names that that you can kind of think of that you've ever played with and against that were like damn you're really talented yeah well um told you i played a high school one stoplight so there definitely wasn't those <laughs> guys just there wasn't just, those guys weren't just everywhere um down there i think man in college i've played with and against a lot of great players uh currently on the team Brees hall is an incredible football player um our running back right now at iowa state he's he's just got that like that it whatever that it is like um, you know, he, he's not the fastest guy on our team and he's not the strongest guy on our team, but he just, he just makes it happen. And it's, kind of, and it looks effortless all the time. Um, you know, against this last season that, that edge guy, at Texas, he's pretty solid. Uh, Joseph Osaya, he got drafted to, I don't even remember where, but, um, Me either. <laughs> we had, we had a, uh, uh, there was a linebacker from Texas tag, Jordan Brooks, um, mm-hmm really good player you know i think there's a lot of good offensive players in the big 12 but i don't study them or play against them obviously because i watch the defense um but man i those are just a couple names off the top of my head um but there's definitely i mean there's a lot of talent out there and as time goes on it's just it's getting crazy like how talented people are <laughs> so you've you know been able to achieve a lot in your football journey um, and, but I always like to ask, you know, athletes, how do they define success? And it might be on the field or off the field, but, but how do you, Dylan, what success mean to you? Uh, honestly, personally, um, I really, ha- we're talking about the talent. I really haven't always been one of those guys that was, wow, he's just more talented than everyone. Yeah. I'm pretty athletic for how big I am. Um, but like, so for me, it was always reaching my full potential. That's kind of how I measured my success. Like if I felt like, I, you know, maybe we lost or maybe I didn't perform as good as I needed to. But if I felt like my potential was reached in that moment, then, you know, that's kind of how I, I've measured success to this point. So we got to ask it, who you bump into pregame? Who's on your pregame playlist? What's, what, what genre are you rolling with? What do you so, listen to if it's like a, a big game? Important. That you, yeah, it's huge. This is this is going to define how much we like you. So. Well, so so this is a tough one for me because my the genre I don't even have like a I listen to like every type of music that's out there. Like if you yeah, threw on like some you. if like you, you threw on some jazz, like I'd listen to it. But like I'll bump country rap, whatever. It doesn't even matter. Give us your top three um, country, top three rap. Oh man, okay. Are you talking artist? Yeah. Yeah. Man, okay, so Luke Combs is a good guy. I like Luke. Okay. Um, so I'm I'm a little partial. I don't know if you even know him. He's kind of smaller. Cody Jinx. I went to a concert of his, so I'm a little. It's a little partial to him right now. Um, shout out Cody Jinx. Yeah, shout out our boy Cody Jinx. You know, <laughs> trying to get him to play at the wedding and stuff. Let's do it. Um, let's see. Uh, man, 
there's so many good ones. Tyler Childers is a good one too. Uh, he's got got some bops. He's more like country than a lot of what people think country is. Um, on the rap side of stuff, man. Here we go. Uh, this is it. Yeah, this is it. But like, <laughs> I can't. I have to be careful what I say because, like, there's there's a lot of that. This is a point of argument in a lot of places, right? And there's like where I feel like where you're from is like a big thing as far as like rap music. Right. So <laughs> now if I'm not going to, if I don't have any, and I, and I don't do a ton of research on where these rappers are from now. If I, so if I don't have any Louisiana rappers in my top three, I, I'm going to apologize to begin Just with. Just throw Lil Wayne out there real quick. But, right? Oh, that's my dude. That's my dude for okay. sure. All right. Okay. You're good. You're good. You're, good. You're, good. you're good. But, but like, not, not really like, not really recently. Yeah. I got to go back a little ways. Like, um, recently I haven't been, I haven't been feeling it, but, uh, you know, you take you way back. I mean, like fireman was my walkout song in baseball. So like it is, it is what it is about five years ago, <laughs> five years ago, you couldn't touch Lil Wayne. Couldn't touch yeah, him. no, no. Yeah. I mean, greatest ever for sure. Um, yeah, so he's definitely up there. Um, you know, represent for the white boys Eminem. You know, you got to do that a little bit. You know, I, I got to be part too, bro. <laughs> yeah, got got to be partial to Eminem for sure. Um, let's see, Lil Wayne, Eminem. It, it's definitely pregame too, Eminem. Like, oh ooh, yeah, you gotta okay. you gotta get fired up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, both of them. Uh, man, I'm not gonna say Drake though, just because like, <laughs> that's basic. And, and like what he's I good, think, though. he he's good, but like what 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 gets me is like he'll release a whole album and like he'll have like one bar and one song and everybody will freak out. But like Lil Wayne, Lil Wayne was dropping bars the whole time, the whole five minutes a song, eighteen songs bars. But we're, we're gonna freak out over one bar and one song. Like yeah, the song right. is good. We bro. all we all know no one can touch. <laughs> Wayne, but uh, so yeah. Um, I guess I mean a little baby's I like little baby. Okay. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Bet. Okay. Little baby okay. carried Drake's last song, so we're all Gucci there. Oh yeah, he did. <laughs> yeah, he did. Okay. So you gave us your three you your, your three artists on the country and rap side. But we're Saints fans here, all of us. We're glad to hear that your favorite team was the Saints. So as you transition to the NFL, when do you report to New Orleans? What's kind of the process like as you transition to the professional? Yep. So right now it's Wednesday. So whatever today is, uh, six days from now, um, I fly down there and then uh, we'll do, you know, physical, whatever. And then rookie mini camp is, is next weekend. Um, and then after that, I'll kind of figure out what, where we're going to go from there. There's voluntary OTAs, that kind of stuff. I'll probably be around for those. Um, I, I just want to be around, you know, like as much as I can. So trying to rent a place right now. Um, you know, and they, they offer you up like a hotel, but, um, you know, I've got a dog and a fiance, so that doesn't really work for me that well. So I'm, I'm on there. Like I've looked at every rental property in the area probably five times. So trying to find a place to rent. Um, and then I'll get down there and, you know, pr hopefully stay down there for, the rest of the summer. That's what's up. So one last question for you, Dylan. I ask it on every one of my podcasts because it's important. So what kind of advice can you give to those young athletes out there aspiring to chase their NFL dreams just like you are? Yeah. Um, I think for athletes specifically, like don't feel like you got, you have to specialize in, in one thing. Like I know that, that I gave up baseball early in my career because I was getting football offers and I went and played my senior year and I ended up getting baseball offers. Um, and I know that I've developed athletically just by playing other sports and my competitive drive has grown just by playing sports as much as I could. And so I feel like a lot of kids now are trying to early on, like, let's focus on this, this only, like, you know, we want to be an NFL player. So let's just play football year round every year. Like, I think, you know, if anything that hurts you, um, it, it definitely helps to get out and, and play other sports and just compete, man. And like, and you don't, you know, I'll, I'm blessed enough to play football for a long time, but I can't, 
I can't play basketball anymore unless it's like with the guys at you know <laughs> the gym. So like, you know, take advantage of it while you can and, and play whatever you, whatever is offered to you, uh, as long as you enjoy it. And then outside of athletes specifically, man, big piece that I use in my life every day is control what you can control. There's a lot mm. of stuff out there that that you can't necessarily control, and you know that shouldn't really affect you in any way. If it's out of your hands, so man, just take advantage of everything you got, and as long as you control whatever you can control and you'll be all right. Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, Dylan Sainer, thank you so much for hopping on the thank show. You, man. Recently yeah, sure. signed with the New Orleans Saints as an undrafted free agent. I was also joined by my boy Merv. He has his own podcast. Make sure y'all check that out. Make sure you guys follow Dylan and Merv on all their platforms. They're like literally rolling on the bottom of the screen. They've been doing it this whole time. So y'all just, y'all, y'all don't really have an excuse not to follow them. So let's make it happen. Thank you so much for helping the show again, man. Merv and I are definitely going to be tuned into your journey as well as everyone who listened and watched the podcast today. We're super excited for you, man. Congratulations. Um, And thank you. Thank you once again for hopping on today. For sure. Appreciate you guys. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.